All right, now today has been all about me using my mandolin to cut my vegetables nice and, uh, and thin and even. That's really important. And I wanted to use that as a vehicle to make some crisps. Or if you're in America, potato chips. We call chips, what we call chips is like what you call fat fries, but we're going we're to get a bit confused if we go down that road. So I'm making some crisps or uh, potato chips, depending on what part of the world you're watching this from. Now, I thought, when you, sometimes when you watch all these videos on YouTube, it seems like things can be done really simply. Uh, and they are simple, but you do need to understand what's happening inside food to make sure you get the right result. So I thought I could just cut the potato nice and thin, straight into the hot oil, it'll just cook up, come out, and be nice and crisp, like crisps. And oftentimes when you see videos, that's exactly what it appears to do. Slice, 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 boom, crisp, happy days. But I discovered it's not quite as easy as that. And I've made a few attempts, and I find if you just cut them thin, even if you cut them evenly using something like a mandolin and put it straight into the oil, you don't really get the right result. And here's why. Now, I'm always interested in finding out the reasons why. Now, here, here we go. But things like potatoes and the kind of vegetables, root vegetables you'll use to make crisp have a lot of starch in them. Now, what happens when you try and deep fry uh, a potato just cut thin in starch? So a lot of the starch turns to sugar. The sugar caramelizes. So it'll go really brown before it's cooked all the way through. And if you've, cooked, if you've not cooked all the way through and released and got rid of all the water, the water will prevent it from being crispy and it will be soggy. So my first few attempts have come out a bit soggy and I wasn't sure right. why. I did a bit more research and I say, well, some techniques suggest you soak them in, in water or soak them in salt water, almost like a brining process. Wash them a few times, you'll see the water go cloudy and when it starts to run clear, you know you've got rid of some of the excess starch. Some other techniques suggest that you could par boil the potatoes which obviously releases more starch as well so i'm going to try a few different methods the first method i tried was just putting the stuff straight into the oil didn't come out that well they were soggy crisp around the very very edges perhaps but by and large soggy not a great great result and they browned too quickly so rather than taking two or three minutes to cook they were done in about 30 seconds they were already brown anymore they'd burn because all the sugar's caramelizing so i've got some which are soaking in water uh, and i'm going to uh, par boil some in some boiling water and I'm gonna see which one of those two methods produces the best results. Also, it's very important to make sure your oil isn't too hot. Around about 350, 370 degrees, um, 350 to 370 degrees Fahrenheit. That's worth roughly about 200 degrees centigrade. So I'm gonna try and make sure I regulate my oil about that kind of temperature. Okay, I think we're just about ready. So here we have our par boiled potato, par boiled carrots and power bottle potato again. One slice really, really thin. You can see how thin these are because it's so thin you can see your finger through them. Whereas these, you can still see your finger, but they're a little bit thicker. Over here, we have the, the, the veg that was sliced and soaked in cold water with a touch of salt, but not parboiled. Either way, both methods are designed to get rid of excess starch. So we'll be able to compare uh, the parboiled to the, the soaked. So now we're gonna cook. Okay, we're ready. Now my first attempt, ended in very, very soggy looking crisps. This is my second attempt. We've soaked uh, the potatoes, got rid of as much starch as we can. All right, I'm gonna drop one in, see what happens. Let's just see how one, that one does first. Now, previously it would go brown straight away because of the, the sugar, the starch into sugar and caramelizing. This is taking a, a bit longer, which is good. And when all the sizzle stops, that's an indication that all the water has gone out of it. All right, this is our first one. They reckon. Nope, soggy. Our soaked ones to get rid of the starch. Seen to be a little bit hit and miss. The first one didn't appear very crisp. The second one looks a little bit better, but still not very crisp. So rather than waste all my produce, let's very quickly now move across to the parboiled ones. We'll leave these ones to dry. So they're not really crisp so far. We've made soggy something. So let's see what happens if we parboiled one. So here we go, parboiled. The king and country. Okay, and I do believe we have ourselves a crisp. So it seems like the parboiled technique 
works a lot better than the soaking technique because that looks like a completely regular crisp. Soaked, soggy, parboiled, crisp. So rather than do all my salt like this, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna parboil the rest of the, the veg to make sure we get a decent result. So at least we know what we're doing now. All right, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna drop the rest of these in now. Now we know it works. actual crisp. So now, I think that teaches us that the parboiling process works way, way better than to just, just adding uh, water and soaking them. Let's do a few more. I'll drop you in. What's crazy about this as well is that all this is just this bowl. I think it's pretty much one potato. So it's amazing how many crisps you can get out of just one potato. But yeah, power boiling seems to be definitely be the way. It, this took way longer. It's just taking me hours. This took way longer than I thought it would. But we have a result. And more importantly, we understand why we get the result we get. So my aim was just to see if we could make some potato chips or crisps as we call them in the UK. Initially I thought maybe I could use my mandolin, just cut them really thin, drop them in boiling oil, voila, potato chips or crisp. But it doesn't work exactly like that. So on a bit more research, some people said you can soak them in water and some people suggested power boiling, but I didn't really know what that was for, but now I understand. When you just put the potato in the, in the fry and start to cook straight away, um, it has too much starch. So the, starch, the sugar in the starch starts to caramelize and goes brown before the potatoes had a chance to fully cook and the potatoes full of water. So as a result, it browns on the outside really quickly and we take it out, it's still wet on the inside. So they're wet, ergo it's still soggy. So what I did first of all was I soaked them in water, then tried it again, but still it wasn't quite sufficient, it wasn't a consistent result. So finally, on some more research, I parboiled all the ingredients. So that means you half boil it, then I deep fried it, and then voila, we have what we call crisp or chips. So for example, here's one here, here's one I did earlier. Let's, let's do the crunch test. Make sure the microphone's in and... Mmm, that tastes a little bit salty, put too much salt in, but hey. That tastes incredible. It's light, it's crunchy, and I like quite thick, solid crisp, but that's really, really, really nice flavour. Moving on, we tried some sweet potato. Let's try the sweet potato. I was worried because of all the sugar, it wouldn't have a nice crunch. That's a lovely crunch, that. Potato, sweet potato, parboil, they've worked really, really well. This one is turnip. Not as crunchy, a little bit chewy. I don't actually like the taste of turnip, so got, for me, it's got a slight bit of aftertaste, which I'm not personally, I don't personally like, but someone else has tried it, came in the room and tried it, and they loved it. Turnip, not my personal favorite. Here's one we tried, carrot. I like cornflakes, but the carrot, not so good that. Not crisp, doesn't really have much of a flavor. So carrot's not, carrot's not worked so well. Over here we have the big chunky crinkle cut chip. Nice flavor, but soggy. So you have to think about how we cook this because because it's so thick, it's cooking a bit more like you would a chip or a French fry, which, which you might call, or potato wedges, which you might call in another country, we call them chips. So it cooks a bit more like a chip, so it's, you can taste, the, because it's so thick, you can taste the potato inside, not as crispy as, as I think I would have liked it to be. Maybe if they were part fried and then finished off in the oven, so they bake and dry out longer, that might work for these thicker ones. Mm, not bad. And finally, we had uh, some cut into a french fry shape, and unsurprisingly, it tastes quite a lot like french fries. Mm. So on two counts, one, we know how to make crisp. You, you get your potato, cut it th thin as evenly as you can, you parboil it, then you cook it until it's crisp, take it out, 
you have perfect crisp. Some vegetables crisp up better than others. The sweet potato crisps up quite well, although it takes longer. Swede, not so good. Carrot, not so good. The thicker the potato, the more like chips you get rather than crisp. So I'm suggesting maybe you might part, do it in, in, in the fryer, and then possibly finish it off in the oven so it bakes over a longer period of time, has time to fully dry out and harden. I think that would probably work better with the thicker ones. And then, unsurprisingly, the ones that are cut like fries, taste like fries. There we have it, my experiment over, and we've learned a lot. Once again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Food Tech is now available on Instagram, uh, on Facebook. Um, yeah, that's it. My name is Mr. Lionbird. Thanks for watching. But you can call me Sir. Peace. Thank you.